Olive is an ostrich. She lives with her family in the outback. But Olive is very different. Olive's dad loves to run. Olive isn't a fast runner. Olive's mum enjoys laying huge eggs. Hmm. Olive doesn't like the look of that at all. Olive's little brother pecks at the ground to find tasty roots to eat. Pecking at the ground makes Olive sneeze. But Olive has an incredible imagination. So while the rest of her family are running, pecking and laying eggs, Olive can be found imagining herself going on amazing adventures when she buries her head down, down, into the sand. Until she popped up somewhere new. Olive was standing in a big science laboratory, surrounded by test tubes filled with colourful bubbling liquids. She wore a white lab coat and a big pair of safety goggles. Suddenly, she heard a voice. Ah, no, 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 no. What is the answer to this problem? Olive turned around and saw a small man in a lab coat. He was muttering to himself and staring into a microscope. Hello, I'm Olive. Ouch, you startled me. I am Professor Comover, but you can call me Hair Comover. I am a very busy scientist. What can I do for you? I was going to ask you the same thing. Are you in a spot of bother? I've been trying to invent a cure for baldness for many years. It's driving me mad. The professor turned and picked up two bottles from the table. I need to mix together the right ingredients for the cure. If I do, I will have beautiful flowing hair again. Oh, how I miss my hair. Look, this is me when I was younger. Handsome, eh? I just can't find the right ingredients. I don't know much about ingredients for your cure, I'm afraid. Then Olive spotted something in the corner of the lab. Hmm, a mop? I think I may have an idea. Close your eyes, hair comb over. Professor comb over closed his eyes. Olive pulled the handle off the mop and stuck it on top of the professor's head. You can open your eyes now. The professor looked in a mirror. I, I look like my great aunt Brunhilde. He shrieked. I don't want this. I want to grow my own. All right, keep your hair on. <sighs> look, if you really want to help, uh, I need you to get that big blue book down from the shelf. Well, this book can't have been open in a very long time. It's covered in dust. Olive opened the book and dust flew up everywhere. And Olive couldn't help sneezing. Achoo! The sneeze made her fall backwards into a shelf filled with hundreds of bottles. One of them toppled over and poured orange liquid into a beaker of purple liquid on the table. No, wait, that's not good. Cried the professor. All of a sudden there was a huge... Bang! I don't believe it. It's a miracle. You did it, Olive. You found the cure for baldness. You are a scientific genius. <laughs> Professor Comover was so excited, he danced about all over the place. Thanks very much. Beamed Olive. It was then she caught her own reflection in the mirror. <laughs> Well, I like it, but this huge hairdo could take some getting used to. Hey, would you like me to style yours a bit? Why not? Replied the professor. Using a comb and a pair of scissors, Olive went to work styling the professor's new hairdo. What do you think? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Thank you very much. Well, it looks like you won't be needing to read this dusty old science book anymore. Oh no, I'm going to... Jump! <laughs> I've lost all me hair. Oh, well. Hair today, gone tomorrow, eh? <laughs> they both laughed. And as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive, daydreaming again. Said her mum. Okay. Actually, I've been helping kill boldness. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. <laughs> Olive's feet were buried in soft yellow sand. 
It was very hot and sunny. Look, where am I? Said Olive. She could see three huge triangular-shaped buildings in the distance. Olive was so busy looking at the pyramids, she didn't notice the huge hole in the ground and fell right in. <laughs> Olive picked herself up. There was someone in the middle of the hole, digging deeper and deeper into the sand. Hello? Hello? Called Olive. The digging stopped and a small mole popped his head up and squinted at Olive. Hello, who's there? I can't see you. Complained the mole. Hello, I'm Olive. Nice to meet you. I'm Horace Molius, archaeologist extraordinaire. Welcome to Egypt. Egypt? How exciting! But what's an archaeologist? An archaeologist is a discoverer of old things hidden underground, but today I'm just trying to find my mummy, explained Horus. Oh, I've heard about these ancient Egyptian mummies that have been buried in the sand for thousands of years. I'd love to see one for real. Oh, um, why are you throwing all of these treasures away? Olive pointed at a pile of sand containing lots of sparkly gems and jewels. Oh, what treasure, said Horus. Olive held up a crystal, and Horus had a really close look at it. Oh, you're right, said Horus. I can't see a thing. I've lost my glasses somewhere in the desert. Olive looked around and had a think. Hmm, shiny crystals, an old whip. I think I may have an idea. There you go, Horus, said Olive. She had tied the whip around Horus's head, looping two crystals on it to make a pair of glasses. Oh, I can see, I can see. Horus cried. He was jumping for joy. But Horus's jumping had loosened the ground. It started to crack beneath their feet. Olive and Horus fell through the ground and disappeared. <laughs> Are you OK, Horus? Asked Olive as she dusted herself down. Yes, I'm all right. OK! Exclaimed Olive as she looked around in wonder. The room was full of all sorts of ancient Egyptian treasures. Oh, back home again. That's a shortcut I've never used before. And I was close to my mummy all along. <laughs> mummy! Cried Horus as he rushed to give his mummy a really big hug. Welcome home, dear. Said Horus's mum. Oh! <laughs> so you meant you were looking for your actual mummy, Horus. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Molius. I have to say, you look much younger than the mummy I was expecting. I thought we were looking for one of these. <laughs> they all laughed, and as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive daydreaming again, said her mum. OK. Actually, I've been in Egypt looking for mummies. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> But Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. Olive was outside in a large field. It was a cloudy day and there was a machine with a huge pipe poking up into the sky. Lots of wires ran into a control box on the side with a big dial on it. Oh, watch out! cried a voice. Olive just had time to duck as an old man flew right over the top of her head. He had a backpack with a spinning propeller and was carrying a remote control and a strange-looking object. Oh, are you OK? I'm Olive. Yes, I think so, said the old man. I'm Dr Cleverbrain, famous inventor, and this is my weather machine. I've just been trying to mend it. A weather machine? What does it do? It controls the weather. It makes clouds, rain, snow, thunder, lightning, wind, and it can even suck up the clouds too. But this special multispectral Ujikali herbal majometer has fallen off the top, and the machine won't work without it. Oh, well, 
Can you fix the um, multi-spectral thingamy? I've been trying to fly up there using my helipack, but can't work the helipack remote control and hold the multi-spectral Ujikali Erpel Majometer at the same time. Hmm. A helipack? A remote control? I think I may have an idea. Maybe I could control your helipack using the remote control so you can replace the... My multi purpley thingamy thing. Great idea, Olive. Dr. Cleverbrain gave Olive the remote control. She started to move the sticks and jerkily guided Dr. Cleverbrain up to the top of the pipe. Olive was concentrating hard. This wasn't easy at all. Just a little bit closer, Olive. But Olive was so focused on controlling the helipack, she didn't notice she'd bumped the control dial on the weather machine. The dial on the machine turned to wind. Ah, oh, ah, no. <laughs> Olive spun around trying to control the helipack as she watched Dr Cleverbrain, but got tangled up in the wires so she couldn't see what she was doing. Who oh, turned out the lights? The weather machine made lots oh, of rain. Oh, oh nine, nine. Ah. Then suddenly it made a thunderstorm. Oh, ah. Then a snowstorm. Oh, oh, oh. And finally it sucked up all the clouds in the sky, along with poor old Dr. Clever Brain. Oh, then there was a bang and a clatter, and Dr. Cleverbrain came flying out of the doors at the bottom of the machine. He helped untangle Olive. Oh, what happened? They fixed the machine, Olive, just like new. Olive looked up and oh. saw all the weather shooting out from the machine into the sky. In one place, it was snowing. In another, it was raining. And in another place, there was a thunderstorm. And right above Olive Ooh. was bright sunshine, making a beautiful rainbow. Looks like it'll be hard to forecast the weather today. <laughs> Chuckled Olive. They both laughed. And as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive daydreaming again, said her mum. OK. Actually, I've been using a weather machine to make weather. Your head's been in the sun too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. <laughs> <laughs>